Welcome to another episode of the second Math Skill series on navigation. In the previous episode, you learned how to use navigation in a multimodule project. In this episode, we'll take it a step further and convert the coffee module to a feature module. If you're not familiar with feature modules, you might want to check out this video first, which is linked in the notes below. Feature modules are not downloaded at install time, but rather only when the app requests them. This saves time and bandwidth on downloading and installing, as well as device storage. So let's save some bytes for the users. Let's jump in and start coding. Since I already modularized the Donut Tracker app in the previous episode, I'll start with converting the existing coffee module to a feature module. First, I replace the library plugin with the dynamic feature plugin in Coffee Modules Build Gradle. Next, I declare the Coffee Module as an on demand module in Android Manifest. Now that the Coffee Module is converted, I add this module as a dynamic feature. I also remove the Coffee Module from the list of dependencies in the app Build Gradle and add the navigation dynamic features dependency. Once the Gradle sync is complete, it's time to update the navigation graph. I change the include tag to include dynamic, add an ID, graph name, and the module name which points to the feature module. At this point, I can safely remove the ID property from Coffee Graph since the dynamic navigator library ignores the ID property in the root element of the included graph. In Activity Main Layout, I change the name of the fragment container view from Navhost Fragment to Dynamic Navhost Fragment. Similar to what we did in included graphs, to make dynamic include work, the menu item ID for copy needs to match the graph name instead of the destination ID. That's all I need to do to add dynamic navigation. Now I'll use the bundle tool to test the feature module. You can also use the play console to test feature modules. If you want to learn more on how to use Bundle Tool and the Play Console to test feature module installation, you might want to check out this video, which is linked in the notes below. I also want to test what happens if the module cannot be installed. To do that, I deselect DonutTracker.Coffee from the list of modules to deploy in Run Debug configurations. Now when I run the app and navigate to coffee list, a generic error message is displayed. Now that the feature module setup is complete, it's time to polish the user experience. Wouldn't be nice to give the user customized feedback while the feature module is being downloaded or show a more meaningful error message instead of the generic one. To do that, I can add a monitor to handle installation states, progress changes, or errors while the user stays on the same screen. Alternatively, I can add a customized progress fragment to display the progress while the feature module is being downloaded. Navigation has built-in support for progress fragments. All I need to do is to create a new fragment which extends the abstract progress fragment. I add an image view, a text view, and a progress bar to show the download status. Next, I overwrite the onProgress function to update the progress bar. I also overwrite on failed and on cancelled functions and update the text view to give the user some feedback. I need to add the progress fragment destination to the navigation graph. And finally, declare the progress fragment as the progress destination of the navigation graph. Now I run the app again with coffee deselected and navigate to coffee list. This time, the app shows the customized progress fragment. 
Similarly, I can test the app with the bundle tool to see how the progress bar works as the coffee module is being downloaded. That's all! In this series, we revisited Chat's Donut Tracker app and added coffee tracking functionality because I like coffee. With new functionality comes new responsibilities. To offer a better user experience, first I added Navigation UI to integrate UI components with navigation. Then I implemented a one-time flow and conditional navigation. Later I used nested graphs and include tech to organize navigation graph and modularize the app to save network and storage for the user. If you enjoyed this navigation series, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also let us know what you want to see next. Thanks for watching. Make sure you add navigation to all your Android projects. See you next time.